Hey! Oh, <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, so what is this? I know you all are asking what this is, and what is this? And what is this? All right, so yeah, COVID-19 has been going on and it's been about that amount of time since I've done a video that things have gotten crazy and so just got a little bored, wanted to shave my head. I've done it a couple of times in my life. It's been a few years. This is explained by the shoe because they kind of match. So anyway, look, when there's a sea of plain Jane, white Air Force Ones and black Vans out there, some days you just want to go crazy and you want to stick out like a buoy in the middle of the ocean. You know an orange buoy in the middle of an ocean? You can see it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it really sticks out. Right. If you're the kind of person who likes getting attention and likes those awkward stares and gawks and you like someone to point out and be like, yo, nice kicks, there's nothing better that you can do than wear an ugly pair of shoes. In my opinion, the epitome of ugly looking sneakers is exemplified in this Mason Margiela Fusion sneaker, which let's be honest, looks like it was dipped in a vat of acid in a 1980s sneaker factory and the shoelaces were tied by toddlers. But, but why do I find this sneaker not ugly, but beautiful? What did you just say? And we can even ask the question more in general, why are people captivated by blatantly ugly things, whether that be clothing, art, music? Well, I'm about to start on a long digression. To give you just a couple of examples from the art world, back in the medieval period, artists defied the conventions of their day by depicting children, even babies, unrealistically, making them look like old men. Vox even wrote an article about this exact topic, commenting on this 15th century piece, saying that the baby in the picture looks like he was just accused of violating insider trading laws. I mean, seriously, he looks like a 45 year old day trader. Or this famous Jackson Pollock piece, which sold for $140 million, like for real? I mean, let's be real, this painting looks like it's just a bunch of scribble and paint strewn all over a canvas, right? This painting can be compared to the Fusion sneaker. Looking at the shoe or looking at the painting is an exercise in suspending your notion of what art should be. I think to many people, art is something that's supposed to convey some sort of obvious or direct meaning that maybe even looks like something we are used to seeing every day. Like the statue of David, it's this perfectly sculptured statue of the human body, which just looks like it took incredible talent to do. But when looking at the Jackson Pollock painting or even the shoe, all you need to do to appreciate the artwork is to take a step back and forget about your previous conceptions of what art is supposed to be like. Simply step back, look at it, and absorb the colors and the patterns. Get lost in the busyness of the crisscrossing streaks of paint. Notice the proportionate distribution of colors and think of it as a sensory stimulation experience. Not something that requires the examination of every single little detail. Okay, so now look at this shoe and let your mind relax to see the beauty in the chaos. Notice the theme of colors and how they mix to complement one another. Observe the different textures of glue, paint, and fabric. It's a captivating mess of materials like calf leather, polyester, and rubber combined to wrap your foot in a piece of modern abstract art. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. I will stop pretending like I am an art museum curator because I'm certainly not. I don't know anything about art, but it was really fun to research. Back to the facts about this bad boy. I got this at Farfetch. I really wanted to get it from a reputable retailer so I could try it on, make sure it fit, and know that it was really going to be the real deal. So it's not too comfortable to wear. It's not as soft and spongy as the Balenciaga Triple S, but it is lighter and not quite as chunky, even though it is a chunky sneaker. It's fairly hard to walk around on. There's not a lot of give. And even though it is made to look destroyed and messed up, the bottom is very clean. So it is possible to get messed up, but again, you wouldn't notice any of this getting messed up really at all. So let's try on some outfits. Since this particular shoe would be the accent of your outfit, we can keep the rest of the outfit simple. 
In this first example, I'm just wearing moto jeans from Express that have been altered and hemmed, a long line white tee from Urban Outfitters. I'm rocking these no-show socks, and I will say the shoes do tend to pull down your socks if the socks are too short. And then I threw on this distressed guess white pleather jacket. I consider this like my Blade Runner look. Rugged, futuristic. For a second outfit, I can also invert the colors and wear a black t-shirt with these gray six silk jeans. I put a link in the description below. I didn't review these jeans in my last video, but they have a great selection of skinny jeans. All right, now for this third outfit, let's go all black and add a pink destroyed highlight on top. We've got an Urban Outfitters long black textured t-shirt on the bottom. Notice all of my textures are not very smooth since I'm going for that really destroyed rough look with this outfit. I've got H&M ripped jeans and this pink denim jacket from Zara. It's really destroyed and ripped, which goes great with these shoes, but again, the foundation of my outfit is simple. I don't wanna make the entire thing too busy because the shoes are already very busy. So after discussing all this, I just think that to break the boredom of life, especially now that we're all quarantined and are looking for things to do, we need some ugliness to give us a little spark and rejuvenate our tastes. Creating something new and crazy and ugly and unique smashes the monotony of day-to-day -day living. And I wanted to share this parting quote from the New York Times Style Magazine regarding paintings and art. What exactly is deemed ugly, of course, remains in the eye of the beholder. Mimicking infantile derangement is outrageous to some, a snooze to others. But what unifies ugly painting is its defiance of the obviously attractive, familiar, or lifelike. Wow, how inspirational. You know, I just realized that we can't actually go anywhere, so I don't have any place to wear these in public. So, what was the point of this video? Hey! Oh.